This chat is a free-flowing conversation between you, Max, and Shaka. Exercising spiritual curiosity and the Socratic method to explore boundaries, definitions, and differing perspectives, we will dissolve the MF, that is the masculine feminine understanding, and tune you into the healing center of the world, that is Costa Rica. The show starts with a few questions to dive into and really stir you up. It soon takes you into a free-flowing conversation and the last quarter of the show is open to relational or well-being dilemma and advice from the show's hosts to you. Welcome, welcome to Frequently Speaking. I'm here with beautiful Shaka and today we are going to be explaining and delving into deeply when a motherfucker come to realize. Now, you know we got to play on words with this with this MS and really what this is about is about the balance between the masculine and feminine. And Shaka is going to introduce herself and give you a brief description on what our whole premise is here and what the importance is of masculine and feminine. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Max, for the beautiful intro and uh, welcome in everyone. My name is Shaka. And so just a little bit about this show, why we started it. We think this podcast is very important because we are in the new age. We're moving into the age of Aquarius. Um, we have mm. had the, the female revolution and it's changed everything. Uh, the dynamics between men and women, they're changing, they're evolving. And we feel like we're in a good position to be on the front line to just open up conversation spaces, new dynamics between men and women and new perspectives. So we hope you will enjoy and yeah, just, just coming into that, that new age, um, this is why we want to start out this, this first episode with that is because it's a huge realization, you know, and this masculine and feminine, we all have this dynamic within us and it's this conversation that's playing out and this dynamic that's consistently in this dance and it's like, how do I be, you know, how do I be masculine? How do I be feminine? How do I embody it? How do I express it? And all these, these different questions and um me and Shaka both love questioning everything and that's that Socratic approach is you know uh just for me in in as an example is I believe spirituality is just asking questions the more questions you ask the closer you get to that center or you know god or universe or shakti or whatever the hell you want to call it you know um but the more we ask questions and the deeper we ask questions, not with uh, a sense of doubt, but with a sense of curiosity or exploration can bring us into this realization of what this masculine and feminine is. So this is really where the, the name came up for this. You know, we, we have this powerful dynamic of, you know, the masculine presence and the feminine presence. And we're going to get more into like the quadrants of that and how that balances both of us out. But it's also like realizing that and, and taking these more like esoteric uh, aspects of ourselves and really bringing them down to reality. So that's what we hope to, to bring to you guys with not only these questions, um, but with this structure and also our experiences, you know, um, Chaka as a, a yogic, let me not say yogi, a yogic practitioner and taking that and weaving it into her life and me taking the path of, you know, spirituality and movement and body and, and weaving that into my life and just how these dynamics played out in particular situations that we've both been through. And we've also come to know each other that we also have a lot in common. So um, the questions that we're going to have for you guys that are going to stir up, we're not only going to be giving you answers for them from our personal experiences, but, also opening that up too for you guys to have this this dynamic and this have this conversation with us because we're all going through this age of Aquarius we're all experiencing it um, and it's really about that that masculine feminine presence and kind of creating some texture around it um, me and Chaka both have a background in somatics as well mine is a little bit more kinesthetic um, so this is really what we want to kind of give you guys a uh, a feel around and a feel for is this masculine and feminine. And one of the curious questions that we have today is what kind of masculine and feminine would you want to embody? You know, like we know that this energy is within us. And this is a question that uh, 
we've gone back and forth about and kind of felt around and Mm -hmm. it's really like taking that responsibility of bringing it into your body and expressing it you know and you know with me with words and this being based in like frequently speaking it's embodiment is really that externalized um expression of what you have in your body so if Mm -hmm. you have this masculine and feminine like how do you define that Mm. for you shaka and well how does it express itself yeah Ah, yeah or how does it express itself in your in your life um i am just taking like responsibility for right like how do i want it (laughs) (laughs) you're like how do you express itself okay (laughs) yeah i guess because i come like i'm kind of coming from like a real I have a real resistance to gender like stuff, like inter like okay. separating gender stuff. Um, and I guess we were reflecting on this question a lot in terms of like, <clears throat> how does the masculine and feminine uh, present itself in ourselves or how do we, how do we um, identify it within ourselves? Right. Mm. And I just find that really hard to kind of separate. So I was thinking about it um, when we, I was mulling on this question and thinking about like, I guess characteristics, I suppose, because how do we start to define gender, masculine and feminine? We kind of start to define, oh, masculine embodies this principle, feminine embodies that principle. So generally you would say masculine is more outward, more active, more action-based. I would say maybe that's to do with obviously the reproductive system, you know, it's got a goal, (laughs) <laughs> it's going to find it. And that's how mm-hmm. it, that's how the, the masculine energy moves. Right. Um, and then the feminine is more internal. It's more receptive. It's more mysterious. It's kind of more hidden. It's considered, it's associated with the moon. Um, and so a little bit more, hmm, uh, m- basically in mystery, I suppose. So these are like kind of the basic principles, how we may, and again, you know, I, I guess I understand those energies in terms of how our re- reproductive systems are. And that makes sense to me because I think men and women are different um, physically and energetically. But then I think when we start to get into gender, this starts to feel really like, hmm, how do we start to separate this out? So you might have like characteristics, like for example, nurturing, strength, being a protector or being angry or like this whole spectrum of human expression, emotion, characteristics. And then we've got some that we partition, they're associated with feminine and these are associated with masculine. But I think, and this is why we called this the the mf quadrant because actually there are two expressions we have an expression of strength in the feminine and the masculine and yes they're different but how do we just say all oh, right men are strong women are the or the opposite it's not this is not this is not how i see it um it's a little bit yeah. more integrated than that so sorry i didn't really ask mm. answer the question as a preamble <laughs> no but i, I feel in. like that that's a good a good grounding of it because just even get in that same resonance with the presence. I mean, this is really about what it what it takes to realize something, right? So like how how do we see that it's real? You know? Like we know that it's there, we know that these energies are there, but also like how do we make it real? And even with you just saying with noticing this resistance that you have with like placing the gender in in either one of these spaces, I even it was just kind of eye opening to me that you almost leaned into that that gender aspect because when I think of gender I mean gender I think of like gen- generation you know like how is this masculine energy generated and how is this feminine energy generated like through time you mm-hmm. know um because like for me I see this masculine this feminine energy as you know it's eternal it's limitlessness you know and so I know okay if I say okay if this is real then it's been it's not just me. It's not just my my grandmother or my grandfather or my great grandmother or my great grandfather. This masculine and feminine energy has just been expressing itself through this avatar, and I've just chosen to be more like male dominant, you know, like the way I was born biologically and all these things. And that's where I feel like gives me neutrality of the trait. Like, how do I express that self? Because that's like to say, you know. Uh, women are nurturing you know mm. does that mean that man can't be you know like well, i still embody those traits I, I i can nurture you know i nurture the hell out of some shit you know <laughs> so 
<laughs> so for me, like I see that type of resistance in not being, um, I guess, confined by a trait. Yeah. So I say, okay, you know, let me, let me think less of the gender aspect of it and just give myself that free forming sense of this emo or this um, essence. And it's just expressing itself through uh, like space and time. So when I think of like the embodiment, it's funny that I have to almost put myself in a responsibility of saying like, okay, you are a man as this, as this time right now in this vessel in this capsule, you are a man. This is what the gen, this is what the, the biological gender is representing. So the way that I want to, or I'm choosing to, because then I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. I, I need to have a choice and I need to have my free will of saying, okay, what is a man? you know, and not even, not even necessarily like, what is a man? Cause this is how it's just going to be expressed through me, but what is masculine energy? Okay. Mm-hmm. And I, and I kind of make a, a, make contact with that and allow it to express itself to me. And then I say, Oh, okay. Like I'll, I'll, I'll do it like this, you know? And I, and I have this almost like autonomy and the same way with the feminine energy. So, um, to like kind of bring that around to, to how I feel like it's embodied is yes i am like my physical avatar is masculine but in this um acknowledgement of that feminine as well Mm -hmm. i like to embody my feminine traits as being a little bit more fluid and being a little bit more like you said mysterious and that's the pisces in me where Mm -hmm. i'm like ah you know i want to keep the wonder in the world i want to keep the magic in the world and um I feel that also over the years, I've also noticed how sometimes that can be like almost shamed in a way is like when I want to keep like the wonder or magic or like, you know, tell a little kid like, oh, this happened because, you know, Santa Claus or some shit or like, oh, because it's magic. Like you have no idea. And they're just like, they have that moment of wonder, like what? And then like some adult comes out and is like, oh, it's behind your back or oh, it's this, and, like, just ruins the whole freaking thing. And then it's like, oh, well, well why, why are you going to lie to them? But like, it's not lying. Like, how do you – it's it's a fucking surprise. Like, where's the wonder? Where's the magic, you know? Absolutely. And I feel like that feeds, you know, to our imagination, to that feminine aspect of mystery, and um, also, like, the chaos behind it. Like, not everything has to be so ordered, so – Mm-hmm. Um, I guess to like balance that out with my masculine side, that's very, I would say is more so like up here in my, in my mental, it's like very structured. Like you see my spice rack, it's, it's fucking legit. I mean, I just moved into my new place, so it's, it's already legit. So I'm like, hmm, good job, man. But you know, it needs that order. It needs that structure. And that's what it, it, it what, but what that provides for me is like how that masculine energy is embodied is like the organization and i know like and i guess it's it's also like a not a survival mechanism but it's also like a survival technique that if all the lights went out and it's the middle of the dark you know and it's the middle of the night and there's like an emergency i literally know where everything is at in my house like i won't have to like even think about it but when i think about you know if i'm there with my partner she would probably like freak out and be like, Oh my God. And I'm like, Oh, nope. The, the flashlight is here. Or this is here. And it's like, and for me, that provides like that masculine, like safety and that masculine stability. And that, um, it's less of like the order that we, we, we say that we're like, Oh, I don't like, you know, order. It's just this knowing, you know, which is why I feel like the masculine is here. And in the feminine, it's more of like the emotion for me. So mm. that, a uh, way for it to express that's how I feel like the kind of masculine and feminine um, mm-hmm. I have within me that I've become that I've become to gain a relationship and begin to realize like I see how it expresses itself mm-hmm. in reality just in those ways you know mm-hmm. so yeah I love this I really love this I really like <laughs> but I want to pick up on something that you said because you talked about <clears throat> I guess that there's been some almost like shaming around developing certain characteristics um, and wanting mm-hmm. to be more, yeah, wanting to embrace more of these traits that 
generally associated with women or femininity um, and that there being a shame around that. And I think that the vice versa is true. I think men are shamed for, you know, embracing more femininity or fe or, as, or let's say characteristics are associated with being feminine and vice versa. As a woman, you're ashamed mm -hmm. for embracing like. And so I think this is where my resistance with all this is comes from, because I'm like, ah, I don't want to like, I don't want to be categorized or boxed. And like you said, like by my mere embodiment, I'm a woman. So what does that mean? That means I'm going to express myself in in all of these different ways and I, I call that a personality rather than like necessarily oh this is me being my feminine or this is me being my masculine and that mm -hmm. said that said um I definitely think there are things that I do that I express that I feel like maybe not like a masculine because I don't know what like you know and we've had this conversation before like <clears throat> when we were kind of talking about this episode like how, I don't know what it feels like to be a man because I'm not in a man's body. So I can have my mm -hmm. imagination. I look at men and I think, oh, yeah, like, I guess, like, I, I see that like, men have swagger. They 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 sit with their legs wide. They take up space. They're, like, confident. That's because it'd be hot and you got all that stuff going on. It's <laughs> like, once you let it get moist, it's over, you know? So... <laughs> Guys, <laughs> this is the kind of podcast this is going to be, okay? <laughs> Hey, so my cat is I'm giving totally you, I'm to giving get you involved. the experience. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you know. <laughs> oh dear. But um, but yeah, and I guess like there's times when I feel like, oh, I do things that are not necessarily associated with being like feminine. And they're uh, things that I enjoy. And so maybe those things are I got I got a little bit of an adrenaline addiction. Like I sometimes need a little bit of like scariness. Like I I sort of uh, like to, you know do things that are a little bit risky, like, you know, a risk Ooh. to life. Um, like just a little bit, just a tiny, tiny little bit. Um, even like, you know, I, I, I lift heavy weights. Like I, I, I like to go and like go to the gym. I'm like working on like really building a lot of strength in my body and building a lot of muscle, I'm not afraid. Like, you know, everyone goes, oh, like, you know, girls don't want to lift, like, lift weights because, you know, you might bulk up. I absolutely don't care. I want to be strong, yeah. I feel strong in my body. And so I guess these are things that may be associated like you, like, you know, these are these are things that you're not associated with being feminine. Mm. But I feel like a woman. What can I say? I don't know any other way of being. This is just the way that I don't want to say femininity because it's womanhood. This is how womanhood is expressed through me. So uh. when you ask me what kind of masculine and feminine do I want to embody, I want to embody the things that I enjoy, the things that I want without having rules put against me saying I, I should or shouldn't do this. I feel like people should be able to express themselves. And I think in our society, there's so much restriction and like we, we're putting mm. ourselves in these categories and these box boxes and not having this whole spectrum of expression that we could be tapping into if we mm -hmm. wanted to i mean depends if you don't don't want to you know if you're a woman you don't want to lift weights we don't want to lift weights and that's fine if you want to do something yeah. else like it's totally fine but i think this is really about giving ourselves permission to express these different parts of ourselves without yeah without that shame you know mm. yeah no that makes that makes so much sense there's all i mean just in, in the same thing that you said with that, you know, allowing a person or giving that permission to to have this expression, it's mm -hmm. also kind of like, you know, how I was seeing it of, of being able to choose and like almost this masculine way of control of mm -hmm. saying, you know, I see you and, you know, I, I see that you exist, but also like I want to choose, you know, and you're in mm -hmm. this in this essence or in this capsule, in this vessel of being like, okay, I see you, I see you. And this is how I want to express because there's no limits. And mm -hmm. it's almost like that same representation of the masculine and feminine of like that order and then that chaos, you know? So <laughs> there's like this, this beautiful synergy of these, these two different perspectives, but ultimately it comes down to the whole spectrum of it, you know? And to notice it, like you said, you know, with feeling strong in your body and feeling, um, I remember, you know, all the time when I, you know, when I train and I speak to women consistently, it's, you know, I ask them, why do you, why do you want to weight train, you know, or they say they want to do this and they're like, oh, but I don't want to do that. And I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I'm, I'm a person all about, don't tell me what you don't want to do. Tell me mm -hmm. what you want to do. Don't even say don't. We're not even, we're not even going to go down that road. You know what I'm saying? 
So Don't eat that. <laughs> when I right because because then this is what you're focusing on, and then also every step or every action that you take after that is going to be fueled by that. Mm-hmm. You may not feel like that, but that's how you're working. That's how you're you're stepping into this choice of going to live weight. But I don't want to do this. So then this, you're going to hold yourself back from actually, truly, this is the distinction that I make between, you know, um, this same feeling that they're going towards. And, it's, and there's a difference between being strong and feeling strength, mm-hmm. you know, and there's almost mm-hmm. like this, this texture to strength that you have to emotionally feel it, you know, like strong is what I would say is a little bit more external, you know, like, uh, it's a little bit more masculine. It's like, okay, this is like, oh, that guy is strong, you know? But mm-hmm. then also when you think about when somebody says like, oh, that woman's strong, what do you think? Like, oh, she's really resilient. Like she went through some hard stuff. It's always like some emotional stuff, you mm-hmm. know, or like something more internal. True. So we still use that word, but it has yeah. these two different textures, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. And also like I've been in the gym a lot with dudes that, are strong but they don't have strength Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. and for me that has always been a sense of of gaining that like somatics and that texture behind my femininity you know because like I would be in the gym and you know there's sometimes like I would work out with some dudes that are are huge they're strong as hell like yeah you could bench 315 405 whatever the case is great I believe in cool like I can do 225 like I'm gonna stay in my lane but are we going to do this for two hours? You know, because for me, that felt like strength, you know, Mm -hmm. it wasn't like, Oh, I can lift this little bit of weight for like, you know, 45 minutes and do that workout. I like that long run. I like that expansiveness. I like the, you know, the chaos of it all. Like, yeah, let's do fucking two hours and (laughs) go crazy and do 60 sets, you know, but also pace it and do a little bit moderate, but also let's push each other, you know? Um, So this has been, that was like, and it's, it's just interesting that you use the, like exercise and like the gym mm. as as this almost like tool to kind of like feel it out because I think that's an important thing too you know like I'm all about the body like I, I love the body there's so many different languages that we have in the body and I think exercise is a good way to to learn and to see like what you were saying is that that full spectrum you know like you have this masculine side you have the feminine side but like how does that how does that represent it's like for me that is how i that is how i refined i wouldn't say necessarily connected but it is a relationship that i did connect with this feminine aspect of myself because it was also for me which is i feel like is a huge thing for men is my intuition you know Mm. and that has always that put me in a place and it's also saved me a lot like i'm very intuitive like just not even on the spiritual realm but learning how to like ground that a little bit more and like you know be in the gym and look at something and be like oh uh, yeah nah like I definitely I, I can't do that I'm not doing it because I'm limiting myself it's just like I'm not trying to like be egotistical and try to lift this weight and like I've never been injured you know mm-hmm. so I talked mm-hmm. to a lot of you know athletes and guys in this way and I would ask them certain questions like that about being in tune and also it's also has to deal with a sensitivity, you know, because that is a, a feminine aspect of a man is like their intuition, you know, can you, uh, can you intuit enough to say, okay, like this is enough, you know, I don't need to do 12 sets of this. So I don't need to go up an extra 20 pounds because this chick just walked in with these real tight leggings and she been eyeing me. So I gotta, I gotta push it. You know, it's like, where can you dial that down and listen to the body and gain that sensitivity, even though you're in that space? So that for me kind of, it, it also leads into our next question of like feeling that importance of, of connecting to that masculine and that feminine side, because that's also a relationship between the opposite sex, you know? Yeah. And I'll just share like a little bit in that is I started to also notice it just because like using the same tool as, as the intuition, I would notice that when my like previous partners or just women in my life would be more intuitive and like act on that intuition, there was also a part of me that kind of felt too exposed or like seen in those times. Mm-hmm. And I would kind of like shut it down. Like, Oh no, like that's not it. Like you're bugging, you're tripping and almost, 
And this is kind of like, you know, going back to that shaming thing. And that also was disempowering. What I was noticing was it would disempower the women that were in my life because I felt exposed, Mm -hmm. you know? So Mm -hmm. it's also like gaining that sensitivity. I would say like just for men to understand their intuition a little bit more so that we can respect that in the opposite, in the opposite sex, because there are a lot of times where women have been disempowered by their intuition just because somebody feels exposed or they feel seen. And that's really what it is, you know? So um, like, what do you, is there, what ways would you, did you feel like you connected to that masculine? Well, yeah, maybe for you it would be the masculine side and see that being placed in an order in a, in a relationship, like with the mm-hmm. opposite sex. Yeah, I think that's really, really interesting. Cause I think like, like what you're saying, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's really true on both sides, which is like, I don't know, when you were talking, it made me think about, um, I was watching a podcast with Esther Perel and she says we outsource basically, um, our, like essentially the parts of ourselves that are underdeveloped um, when, mm-hmm. particularly when we're in relationships. So if you haven't developed your intuition, for example, as a man, then yeah, that's going to be like really confrontational sometimes with a woman or or sometimes actually the opposite can be true. It's just like embracing that and being like, okay, mm. cool, you take care of that. And I think a lot of that happens in relationships, which is like, oh, women emotional. So you do all the emotional labor and I'll be mm-hmm. okay doing the work and paying the bills basically. And that's it. And right. I get it. like, it makes life simple division of labor. You do this. I do that. Like that makes, I get it. Like I get the simplicity. Um, but you know, we're human beings, we're complex and yeah, I definitely think, Hmm. Yeah. I definitely think I've noticed you know, my energy has, I've always felt at some point that I've like stepping on toes of men, like somehow Mm. by just embodying some, and I never, I don't understand it. Like I can't say, oh yeah, you know, I, I I know I'm aware of this thing that I'm doing, but I definitely am aware that I might do something and I can feel that like, like the backs are up, like, you know what I mean? The hairs are like, kind of like, oh, what's happening? Like, what but that's happening? that intuition. Cause you're a freaking <laughs> psychic girl. You be knowing. And yeah, that's the sight. So yeah, that's the hair. <laughs> Maybe, and I, it's weird. Cause I mean, like I, this could be with like strangers. This is like friends. This is partners. This is like, you know, there's some, and I think there's these like delineated lines of like, right, you operate mm. in this space, I operate in this space. And the two shall never, shall never ever, you know, and I think it's hard. And I've spoken to like maybe other friends of mine, other women friends of mine, who we describe ourselves as quite integrated. We we really do embody like both, like very much. Mm-hmm. And you will often find as you start to move through the world that people want you to make choice, you know, well, you either operate here or you operate there. Like, we don't understand this. Mm. So I really feel like it's it's exciting, you know, like to me, like you and other, you know, other men who are kind of really having this flexibility and this dance between these two aspects of yourself. And then I think you, there's there can be a lot of fun that happens in the relational space. Suddenly there's no rules. Like suddenly you can have, mm-hmm. you know, this dance. And I think, you know, I know that there's been a lot of, you know, um, you know, very popular now or, you know, this idea of polarity, you know, the feminine really holds the feminine space, the masculine. And then that's what creates the dance. But I think a dance is just literally a dance between two poles. So if you've got two people, mm-hmm. a man and a woman, both embodying both their masculine and feminine aspects, I mean, I just think, wow, that's like the dance is even more, you know, this is not just back and forth like suddenly this Mm. is like up down in out like round and round I mean suddenly there's just so much more space for dynamism between um yeah between the opposite sexes and yeah I mean I'm for it this is like that's like Usher in in 20 20 was it 2001 (laughs) showing my age here oh that's like full embodiment of both you know like you said is with that dance and and that's the reality of the situation but I want to I want to kind of come back to what you were what you were just saying with um that connection because it sounds like um you had that resistance there with like you know when the hairs would come up and like you would Mm -hmm. see these things and then you would get this resistance like from these men and like step on their toes and that was you it seemed like like this is what I was picking up is that that's that was you not stepping into that masculine, but 
seeing that masculine connecting with it mm. and that was really the question of like do you feel like it's important to connect with that side and by you being so deeply rooted you know with your intuition and your EFT with with the these skills and these gifts that is like deeply rooted in the feminine and it's like that purity of that essence yeah. do you feel like that connection to that that opposite sex or you know this partner or these men that were in your life was causing this um dissonance within the relationship because you were so deeply rooted in that hmm hmm ah oh, max always asks a good question such a good question i don't know honestly well, I don't you, know. you you said it you said it <laughs> Shit, i'm just trying to realize <laughs> um yeah i don't know i honestly i don't know when you were talking it made me think like i think a very feminine thing to do if we talk about you know feminine and masculine is to internalize that and go oh there must be something wrong with me because i i've done something that's made other people feel uncomfortable i'm doing something that's made other people um you know like mm. you know, create resistance in other people so i'm like oh i've done something wrong you know and internalize that rather than thinking hold on a minute like this is who i am like this is you know and hmm Hmm. I definitely think there's something about outsourcing aspects of self. So I think there's definitely something around. So I'm thinking about a relationship that I had, like very, very, I mean, like very alpha male, you know, mm -hmm. I make money, you know, I, I've got a good car, like house properties, like, you know, real alpha, like male. And obviously this just like inevitably slammed me into this kind of like this, you know a, a different dynamic a different expression of myself and to be honest it made life simple I, I quite enjoyed it I was like well I just don't have to think about anything I just I just you know he leads and that's it and I just turn up look pretty and you know that's it everything's taken mm -hmm. care of and there's something simple about that but you know it's boring in the end because it kind of what happens is in the end like women stuff or like women it's all um, little womeny things over there and I was like man they're uh -huh. not, doing, not doing anything very important and you know like it's just you know and like it's nice it's sweet because you're bringing something sweet and nice into the space we like it when you're nice we like it when you're being you know loving and homely and looking after everybody and like but anything outside it's very like yeah like it's kind of really fixed um mm. one dimensional and then any kind of other expression of like other kind of aspects yeah, I definitely think that can be seen as a threat. But I'm wondering if this is really more to do with like containing the feminine as well. I think there's something about like when you touched on mm. it, about, like the chaos of the feminine, the kind of freedom, the intuition, it's kind of mysterious. It's kind of like there's like there's a fear around that. I think women even fear it in, mm. them, in their selves, you know, um, and it's feared in the world. And I definitely think that there's something mm. around that. Um yeah and I think as I get older and I know myself better and I understand my gifts more like I can yeah I can pinpoint that yeah. a bit better and be a bit more confident about yeah who I am mm. and um yeah yeah it's yeah I feel like to answer your question like Sorry, that part right no I mean because that's like the distilling of it and what you said right there I, I feel like answers that question of why it is important to connect to mm. those sides of you because really what I, I like what I'm seeing is what was happening is that you were so deeply rooted in this feminine aspect and that essence of you know um the intuition the you know the gifts and you know the chaos and the, the mystery and the magic and all that stuff mm. and then you attracted this alpha male which is like completely on the opposite side mm. but there was the importance was dissolving that fear that was there you know, like his fear of not containing that, that rawness and that purity. So not seeing you and then you just kind of like surrendering to that and not fully being in power because you were almost like afraid of stepping into that power. So that, that is like a perfect example of like why this podcast exists, you know, it's because they're, because that's like, that's the motherfucking quadrant, you know, like that's the balance. It's like seeing the, the spectrum here of that masculine and feminine and also seeing the spectrum here of that masculine and feminine and saying, okay, like what is, 
like, yeah, what is the importance of being connected to that side? Because yeah. yes, it is is showing in that opposite, you know, in my partner and the opposite sex. And it doesn't even have to be a partner. Like it can be the males in your life or the females in your life. It's like, mm. but what we want, like for me, what I want to live without is without resistance, you know? So wherever there's resistance, I want to lean into it. So it was almost like this, this fear that was there and that had to be dissolved to mm. kind of allow yourself to step into that other side. But also seeing that importance of like, oh, okay, like it's not the, this masculine, super masculine man that like just does everything, but it's completely like emotionally disconnected, you know? Yeah. Or, you know, even for men, it's like to not, to step into that, that feminine aspect and be like, okay, well, I don't have to fucking like go do yoga and like, you know, wear beads in my hair and like, you know, do all this, these, I don't know what men think is like feminine, but it's about like letting yourself go, you know, like being in that chaos. And I can just say just coming from a man's position is like seeing these, these conditions that we set ourselves. And it's like, for me, I don't personally believe that that's one, it's not powerful as just a human. Like, I don't care if you're man, woman, trans, binary, whatever the hell you want to say that you are. It's, it's just not powerful as a human yeah. to say that one, this thing is that, and this thing is that, and mm-hmm. that's it, you know, like either I'm going to be that or I'm going to be this, you know? And because for me, that doesn't allow your mind to be free. It doesn't allow your body to be free and it doesn't allow freedom of expression. Yeah. So ultimately you're going to become a prisoner. And I don't like that shit. Just as a black man growing up in America, I don't like prison. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm like, res- dissolve all resistance, yeah. you know? So like all fears, all the narratives. And this is kind of like those conditions, you know, to say, okay, you know, uh, cooking or cleaning the dishes. Like, oh, that's a feminine trait. It's not, bro. It's actually like just to be clean. Like, what, you can't cook for yourself? Like, you're a grown man. Like, what if, what if like, Face. you were a like i don't know in the jungle by yourself like you literally could not survive because you don't know how to cook for yourself mm. so these are the type of positions that like i put myself in as a man to like you know challenge that or not even challenge it but just like root it deeper you know because i'm not confined by that you know i grew up with a mom that you know she didn't do everything for me but she made sure like i, I had responsibility and i had these other things like you know taken care of like yeah fucking you know cook for yourself max like yeah like survive like yeah i can cook for you like yeah it's nice but that's where you learned appreciation you know so there wasn't really any of the deep set conditions of like what a female is and then also like not having my dad around but then also seeing a lot of men around was like okay what how do you want to condition this masculine energy and like how do you want to represent being a man so um like our next question is, you know, where did you find it most challenging to uproot these conditions and balance out that dynamic as you started to create the new narrative, you know? Mm-hmm. And for me, this is just kind of like expanding on it a little bit is I've always been creating that narrative. And I think that's the importance of understanding this, you know, when we start to realize like who this motherfucker is, like, you know, who this masculine and feminine is, is like, I'm writing this narrative as I, as I do everything. You know, when you step out in your day and you go to do something, it's like, how do I do it? How, do, how am I going to do it? You know, am I going to do it with fear or what, you know, what's this rooted condition of being like, oh, okay, like, should I go do this? Like, yeah, my body's hurting. Like, should I just not go to the gym today? And like, maybe take care of my body a different way. Yeah. It's like, use your intuition. Listen to that. You know, like that is letting go of that rigidity of saying, no, I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to do this. It's, it's that balance, you know, and for me, that has been the writing of that dynamic, you know, because I don't allow these conditions to, to root themselves. I allow this expression, this embodiment of this motherfucker to root itself, you know, however it so chooses. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a beautiful thing about being in, in Costa Rica is like the jungle has taught me that, you know, like you put a tree down on the ground, it's going to root. Like it don't matter. And you better be on it quick because it's going to grow. And it was like looking at that and being gifted that experience to be able to see that and also embody that as well and be like, wow, like I'm nature too. I can do that too. If I, if I place myself somewhere, mm-hmm. I can just root in because I'm free like that. Mm-hmm. So I found it, um, I guess, 
challenging in the world is like around those times of like being shamed for those things because it was like, you know, uh, being wondrous or being magical was like, and I'm not saying like shamed, like women were like, oh, you stop being like that. You should be like this. It's just like, mm. just even being like told like, oh, well, why would you do that? Why would you want them to believe in something fake? It's like, bro, it's not fucking fake. Like it's actually magic. Like, because you can't like, because you're not magical doesn't mean like, oh, it doesn't exist. You know, I, just for a, a short example, I remember, and I don't know if anybody can relate to this because if you can relate to this, I kind of give you like a silent middle finger because don't do this people it's, it's fucked up and, and, it, and it hurts and it sucks mm. but like imagine surprising somebody right mm -hmm. ultimately what has to happen if you're trying to surprise a smart person mm. you have to lie to them you have to even if it's lying through omission even if that if it's that but you're doing it for a good reason right so it's like oh okay like yeah i can not tell you that like this thing is over there and blah 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 but it was like and this has happened to me so many times that i love surprising people but when i would get into not even just like romantic relationships just in relationship with people mm. and would want to surprise them like you know how much flack i've gotten but like after the fact like oh you lied to me about this oh you lied to me about that oh see remember when i asked you this and you lied to me it's like bro just take the fucking surprise like, you just got a whole cake, you know? Like, you just got surprised by, like, your grandmother that just came. But you're going to be mad at me because I, I lied a little bit and said that this person didn't show up or I was doing something else when I did it. You know? It's like those little things of, like, magic and wonder. Wow. And it's like, I, I look at that and I, I guess this is where this, you know, this question came up was, is about, like, this challenge. is like, when I see that, whether it be in men or women, it's like, what type of challenge do you have with like this feminine aspect of like mystery and wonder and not knowing, mm -hmm. you know, we live in such an age of knowing everything, you know, like these heavy shock vibes, like I got to know everything. Yeah. Like why, you know, like where do you leave any splendor or like wonder for your life to be magical or, you know, joyous. You want to create every single moment. And, yeah, I mean, not that I'm taking anything away from it, but I ask for you, what would you feel like is a is a challenging condition that you had to uproot when you were creating this new like mm. whole embodied? Well, I guess. <laughs> oh man, you like your everything you said is just like literally like light bulbs just going off in my mind. There's so many things I want to pick up on. Flash it, <laughs> light, light. <laughs> um. But yeah, no, I think like the first thing is like, like the one dimensionalness of what, you, you know, kind of what you're saying, like when other people are holding a place of one dimensionalness, then almost you, you're you forced to hold a place. It's, you know, that that saying people can only meet you as deeply as, the, as they've met themselves. So if you, oh not, if you, have, you know, time. it's true, right? It's so true, right? Because if you haven't experience the vastness of the entirety of your being if you're cutting off parts of yourself because right oh, man don't do that girls don't. you know what i mean like if you like really like creating this like really one dimensional aspect of yourself and uh -huh. the people do do it i even like there's a part of me who wants to say no people don't do that and i'm like no people do, i see people all the time where well, we don't do that because you know and i think that's the way where we're brought up i definitely think there's something about how we brought up um you know, those are, those are the things that we, you know, we're taught as we grow up and then obviously society reinforces that. Um, but I mm -hmm. think something really difficult about being a dynamic, multidimensional person um, mm -hmm. in, you know, in environments where the majority of the people that you're interacting with or being with or dancing with um, in the relational space, like you say, be that romantic or, you know, work or uh, friendship, is that it's really mm -hmm. difficult to express those sides of yourself um, when the environment doesn't provide um, that that spaciousness and that context. And I guess what I I guess from my experience, like I spent a lot of my life, you know, trying to fit in and trying to like, and I'm like, man, and I don't know. You get to a certain age and you're like, wow, this is this is boring. I can't do this. And I like, I can't uh -huh. actually do this. It's tiring. It's exhausting because I'm like spending all. And I think that's common. I, d I definitely think there's something about that. That's like almost like the passage of 
like human like the human journeys like you know in your youth yeah. trying to spend all your time fitting in and being like what you think people think you should be and then I think you just get to a certain age where you're like it I this is who I am and that's what it's going to be and like you said like you know being able to root down wherever you are and it is what it is like you are who you are and like you will find your people or you won't you know and then you uh -huh. start to realize and then also even that body awareness you talk about the somatic aspect I think that body awareness when you're in environments with people that create restriction in your body without even realizing you might have mm -hmm. or like, you know, certain types of bodily reactions, you start to, you start to tune into that a little bit more and you start to notice that. And then you, you know, and as an adult, you get to make choices about, you know, where you spend your energy. So I definitely think that's been, um, yeah, that's been a journey. Um, mm. Yeah. In terms of like really, yeah. Like, yeah coming up against that as a challenge and then really being like well actually you know what you either like it like it or lump it basically mm. um this is this is who so I for am. you it was it was like the, the spaciousness to create those narratives mm. like that's what it seemed like you know there was this like contraction contraction like you had to because I also I mean that resonates with me as well as to like almost make yourself small for the world when it was like, no, I'm this big thing, you know? And like now when I'm this big thing, it's like, I got a big ego, <laughs> such a huge ego, you know? And it's almost like we, you know, the world wants you to feel bad for that. It wants you to fit into this small wow. box to, to meet everybody like where they're at, you know? Is it, but and, then, you know, just, just the pick, sorry, quickly, just to pick up what you said, because is it the ego though? Because I'm, I'm really inclined to feel that it isn't because, you know, when you were talking well, about- Well, no, I don't believe that it is either. But people yeah. will make you seem like that, that when you're yeah. trying to, when you are so big and that's just your expression, Yes, you know? Yeah. And I think that's, yeah, that's like something we're, we're definitely going to talk about, you know, in later episodes is about this expression of the male ego and the expression of the female ego and like what that is. But like with this realization is just the realization that myself is a lot bigger than the world is trying to confine me, you know? So it yeah. sounded like for you, that challenge was, the challenge was the con the constriction and the and the conflict of like scrunching yourself down like this, you know, and like I, I fully resonate with that because it's like no, like I have all of this stuff to go, you know, and yeah. I think that is you know the that is the realization, you know, like basically saying like this bigness, this expansiveness, this unlimitedness is real, and this is myself, you know, and it's also like I can, I can kind of reflect on that now and, and see the feminine and the masculine ex trying to express itself and trying to feel it out and doing all these things before, you know, um, realizing how expansive it was. But it's also like seeing that blessing in that, that I had to go through that to be like, oh, okay, now I see the value of it. And I also see like the temperance. Mm -hmm. of not just expanding into this bigness and being egocentric and being entitled and blah 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 and all these different things like I tried to contract that much so now that I'm expanding I see that appreciation and I have that gratitude mm -hmm. which is why I feel like I don't know if maybe you can resonate with this is that we found this path you know because that expansion of, of like you said of trying to fit into this thing and then saying no like choosing oh. yourself Mm -hmm. and then choosing to expand it leads to a more um refined way of expansion rather than just being like you know a kid is born and they're like you know you're telling this kid oh you are everything like nobody can tell you nothing then they're you know entitled as fuck and you know they're like this alpha male or this alpha female and blah 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 and it's like all of this like huge expression and i feel like that is the blessing in that, you know, in that conflict or in that challenge, because in understanding those conditions, you can kind of step out of it and, and start to ask those questions and almost like unpeel those layers so that we start to, like, this is just for me, start to unfurl and bloom mm -hmm. and like birth into what, you know, this path is, is, you know, people call it the spiritual path or, you know, the path to enlighten. It's like, no, it's just my freaking walk, you know? Yeah. And it's like the walk that I want to do, right. And yeah, and it's the authenticity is because that's what we're walking in. You know, it's not like we're walking to like, oh, I'm becoming authentic. No, it's just, this is who I am now. And like, 
like you said, like leave it or lump it. Yeah, I like that. I don't know. <laughs> UK shit, but it's this, you know, this um, this narrative that you want to write and say, okay, this is how I want to walk the balance. You know, I want to see that this masculine energy is going to be expressed this way, and I want to see that this feminine energy is expressed this way, and I want to watch them dance as they like one takes one pedal off and one takes the other pedal off. And then I get to experience that yeah. as that flower or, you know, as that path that's just being laid that's in front of me, you know? And um, for me, that's been an important uh, strategy to take is to, to maintain that balance, you know, yeah. having a good intuition to, to sense what this masculine and what this feminine energy is, but also have this like stability and clarity to also stay on that path and to see it and to not take my eyes off it because it is so beautiful. And like, I have that devotion towards like seeing this path. So for me, that has been the, the, I, I don't want to say practice, but I think that has been the approach to this experience, you know? And, um, I think just to kind of, yeah, like that, that would be the the last question is like, what are some practical strategies you took to balance out those, those conditioned traits? Because it's like, even for me, that was like just growing up a young black man in, you know, in the ghetto in New York, it was like, you know, we're always told like, ah, oh, you too soft. Like I remember a guy mm-hmm. telling me that he, li- he lived across the street. One of my friends, like dad, I remember him telling me, he said, yo, you know what, Max? I was like, you like 10, 11 years old. He's like, you know, Max, when you grow up, you're either going to be a pimp or you're going to be gay. And I was like, <laughs> like in my head, because I was like a witty and like really smart, like smart with my mouth kind of kid. And I was like, I was like, wow, thanks, Paul. But what do you know? And because like, I mean, I knew him and like his reality was like he, he, they had a family and things like that, but also like he was smoking crack and like having like an affair with this, with this drug addict around the corner. It was like, so in my head, in my 10 year old little brain, and I see all of this stuff, I'm like, huh, like you're limiting me to these two futures, but like, what do you know? Who are you? You know? (laughs) Who are you? Which is very interesting to Mm -hmm. see like this male telling me that or seeing that as like my possible future. So it's like, Mm. these these conditions that we don't really realize that people tell us or like you hear or maybe you know your parents used to tell you that like oh you know like oh you could do better or, you know, like you, you got a b plus in class but why didn't you get an a you know it's like there's always these these narratives that we kind of attach to mm. um but i think that is a practical strategy is to really like for me it's been a practical strategy to like fortify my mind and trusting within myself Mm -hmm. you know and Mm. and just have this reliance um yeah and I think there's a difference between relying and depending but having this deep reliance on my knowing and like that for me has always been like trusting yeah and also that has been like a a practical strategy which I feel like is placed inside because when you place that outside then you start trusting everybody and then you start to learn other lessons and you don't want to do that, but I mean, you should all be trusting, you know, but, um, yeah. So like, what, what was something for you that was a practical strategy to help balance out those conditioned traits of that dynamic that was expressing, like to maintain your balance? I mean, I, I'll be honest. I think it's yoga for me. Like it was when I found mm-hmm. yoga, um, or when yoga found you. Of yoga, fa- I was, you know, I was going to say that when you were talking, I was like, do we find the path or does the path find us? You know what I mean? Like, because to uh, some extent we're looking, but, and it finds us and we recognize it and then we follow it, right? Um, Almost like the white rabbit. Like, you're like, oh, you you follow it, yeah. right? Something, something connects. Oh my God. I don't remember. Maybe that is the connection of the white rabbit. That, that's the path. Like, mm-hmm. That's the enlightenment. That's the life. Yeah. And it's like the little, I the little to thing. I Alice in Wonderland. The, yeah, like kind of sparks curiosity that sort of goes, oh, what is that? And then you huh. you kind of follow it and like, you know, follow it all the way through. And um, yeah, I think definitely yoga for me, because I think, you know, just coming back to your point on authenticity as well, you know, authenticity is about being you, right? Who you are. Like, you know, you were kind of talking about this kind of overcompensation of like, I am going to be this or like, oh, I'm going to be, what you know, like, I don't think authenticity is that. Like authenticity isn't like, 
I, I've got this vision of this person that I want to be, and then I'm going to do all the steps to get to that person. Actually, authenticity mm -hmm. is about peeling away all of the things that stop you from seeing all the parts of yourself and giving yourself permission to express all of them. And I think we all have this, you know, like childhood experiences, they inform us, right? Like we are, mm. you know, so much of what we know about ourselves is through our experiences in the world and through our relationships. And then that can shape us. And then I think, you know, just kind of coming back to, again, what you were talking about when you we talk about ego, and the thing about it is the ego only operates in that, in that, um, you know, on that level, basically, of experience, what I've experienced, and then what I'm going to experience. So the ego can never be expansive. You'll never discover anything new in the ego. It's like a, it's a place that sort of, all, I already know, and then I'm already going to, like, put it in. Whereas when you, like you said, like, kind of dropping into the mystery and just sort of allowing openness, like, allowing yourself to discover be curious, like follow the white rabbit. Where might it lead? Who knows? And I think this kind of really anchors us into like why we chose to ask questions in this podcast, because we really feel like questions are, is what spark our curiosity because we're not trying to lock it in. We're supposed to be this, or you're supposed to do that. Or, you know, you're, you're actually, this is about self-discovery. And when you give yourself permission to, you know, that comes in layers. So like you said, you know, like today, this is who I am. I don't know if this is going to be who I am tomorrow. I don't know where life will take me and how I'm going to express myself in, in days or years to come. Um, and I definitely feel like for me, like practically yoga was the thing that helped me that. I mean, I came from like music. I came from dance and music background where, you know, women, you got to be thin, you got to be sexy, you got to be hot. That's it basically. And I was really, I was like obsessed, like obsessed with my body, like obsessed with my looks. Um, I, you know, I kind of felt like I had to be. And then yoga really just gave me permission to be like, whatever. Like I remember like one year I put on so much weight and I remember it was the happiest time of my life because, well, I've had happier times since, but anyway, it was a happy time. <laughs> <laughs> but because I was like, I, I, it wasn't, it wasn't based on all these external things. It was really based upon how I was feeling inside of myself. And for the first time in my life, like my body didn't look a certain way. And, you know, I would have thought that that would have made me unhappy, but it didn't. And I feel like yoga really helped me connect to, um, yeah, just my center and who I was and, and that I could find happiness inside. And I think that has been my, yeah, like I have to say, it's just a practice of some kind. I mean, for me, it's been yoga, but I think any kind of practice that, just anchors you into your body, um, I think can be really useful and help you feel good in your body, regardless of what it looks like. Mm. Sorry, I went yeah. on a couple of tangents there. There you go. That's the chaotic feminine. No, there. I mean, there you go. Mic drop. <laughs> I mean, that wasn't, I don't feel like that was a tangent. That was, that was the expression of, of like what it is, you know, like what a practical strategy looks like and then also feels like. And mm. I feel like that is important to have because, Yes, it is, you know, it's good to have a practice and to like do something, but I noticed just what you were saying about, you know, when yoga found you and, you know, where you found it, whatever the case is, it's like the, also the perspective of how you look at yoga. It's not, and maybe correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think you mean just like, you know, doing downward dog or doing shavasana or doing hatha. It's like the practice and the weaving of the practice of yoga, you know, the lifestyle of practicing the eight limbs, you know, of, you know, practicing breath work, of practicing, you know, satya, practicing, you know, um, the haranas and things like that. And, and taking this, this way of life and weaving it in, you know, and understanding that the practice is really just doing this every day, you know, and each piece is going to be different. Each piece is going to feel different and each day is going to be new and experienced, but it's going to add to this like thread that you're continuously braiding or you're continuously weaving, which is your path, you yeah. know? And I think I, that is, that's where it's like important to, to notice like, you know, the difference. I like, guess we want to be practical and we want to have these strategies and, you know, maybe there are some people that, um, are actually afraid of exactly what we're talking about here is the self-realization, you know, because this is like the huge question that led to the, led to the title is like, when a motherfucker come to realize, you know, 
like when do I actually come to realize that I'm choosing myself, mm -hmm. you know, that I'm, I'm not looking at, like you said, of, of this person or this, this persona or this banker or this financial, you know, advisor or this uh, mogul and not fooling myself with this illusion, but I'm stopping and closing my eyes and peeling back those layers to see my authenticity, mm -hmm. to realize myself. And that realization is like the activation of being real, you know, of yeah. yourself. So it's like you also have to, when you, were, when you were speaking, it was like, I think what's missed there and what I want to shed some light on is like the courage that it takes to do that, you know, the courage that it takes to like look inside and be like, oh, I'm going to stop doing this, but I'm also going to start doing this and turn those eyes inward and start looking for this motherfucker, you know, but also realizing that, oh, I have a masculine side and I also have this feminine side. And also the way that you've been told how to be are not really how I feel like is really true as we're finding out who this self is and who this God inside is. And also the conditions that you have been told how to do, like I'm actually, you're, it's almost like we're like unchaining and unconditioning this masculine and feminine energy from within ourselves to express naturally in union yes. you know and i think that is that's kind of what this dilemma is you know is mm. that it is self-realization is to choose ourselves you know and to make that self real you know and to make that self real is to really take it from up there and bring it down here you know we all want to talk about in this day and age about being a creator and being a manifester and i'm gonna fucking manifest me a hubby and i'm gonna manifest me you know, a, a dream apartment and blah, blah, blah. It's like, what about manifesting your real self? You know, mm -hmm. that's and what the MS you, all the things like. that, that, real, that real self should have because you're, you're not just, it's not this thing outside of yourself. It's actually you. And then all the things that come to you are genuinely aligned with like, mm -hmm what you truly want and you then you know that it's not the programming it's not the program that put oh, I want to be a millionaire I want to have a big million pound house or whatever like who told you to want that is that really what you want is that really what's going to make you happy you know well mm -hmm. you told yourself that but that's the programming maybe it is maybe it is that maybe I'm not saying it isn't I'm you know I'm just saying mm -hmm. that you don't know and I think you know just coming back what you said about the yoga practice I think we do always start with the physical because I do think like I mean I teach yoga obviously but I don't go into the class and start talking about, you know, the eight limbs. And it's not because I don't think they're valuable. It's not because they're not, but it's just because we start with the body. Because how do we start to recognize these principles outside of ourselves, outside of the ego, unless they really are integrated and experienced in our body? And that that is mm. done through the practice. And there's so many times when I feel like... I mean, and this is, don't get me started on yoga. I'm sorry, I'm not going to go off on a tangent, but like I do, I'm so passionate about it because I really do feel like there's moments where people are like doing the practice and I've done it myself and you're doing the practice and you're like, what am I really doing? I'm just doing these shapes. And then one day you get it. Like there's something where you your body aligns in a certain particular way and you get it. It's like, it's so natural. And then I think that's what it is. It's experiential. It's felt. It's like, it's not like, a, huh. it's not a, it's not a principle. It's not a theory. It's not this kind of these words that you should do. It's like felt. It's an experiential thing that's felt in your body where you're like, Oh, that's what alignment feels. That's what it feels like to be in alignment with my truest essence. And then I think once you kind of connect to that, regardless of whether that's held permanently as a permanent state um it's not easy to do but you know mm -hmm. you recognize it then you can start to like oh I I start to see these the theory the principles and you can start to like you say the weaving the weaving of that in into your life like the theory and the practice start to meet each other um mm. I mean the lineage holder of my you know my practice you know his his saying was 99% practice 1% theory you know like yes mm -hmm. the theory is important but like if you're not going to practice it well you know theory is just theory basically how yeah. you got to live it um and and like you said like a lot of this manifestation stuff is like yeah it's like we we want stuff outside of ourselves and pulling it in whereas actually if you come into alignment, actually, all of what you really, truly want, what's really, truly going to make your heart full and what's really going to make you happy um, is what comes to you. But like you said, you've got to have the courage. You've got to have the courage, mm -hmm. um, you know, because like to look at yourself isn't. Yeah. yeah. 
yeah so when yeah. you come to realize you come to realize by sorry guys <laughs> right. like, you know and you actually and actually people. choosing that mm. because it's like i mean just as you were speaking there was there was this sense of um almost like I don't know if it was an uncertainty or like a confusion because for me, I've always felt that like mm -hmm. from, I wouldn't want to say from birth, but I always felt like it was innately planted in me mm -hmm. to just choose myself, but not from a, like a selfish standpoint. Mm -hmm. It was just like, remember I was telling you about like, that deep knowing and that trust has always been there. So I think in this, you know, what you said is like, you know, between this balance between practice and theory or, you know, practicing more, but having this concept of both of them, it's like that, I feel like that's part of the realization of making that theory mm -hmm. theorize, you know, and making it a reality through the practice. And, you know, like I'm a hundred percent like, yes, you need to do it in your body first. And there needs to be this, you know, this thing that resonates and, I think a lot of times what happens is, is like when we have those conditions or we have those thoughts or all these things that create this illusion or that Maya, you know, that's there. And we say, Oh, like once I get there, like then I'm going to be this. It's, yeah. It's kind of like for me, I, I took a position of allowing like to keep myself in alignment was just allowing, you know, this, this feminine, this masculine to, to yes. Okay. Once I become aware that both of you guys exist, it's like, okay, what do you both want? But it's also kind of difficult because they're opposing forces. Mm -hmm. So then it's also like, well, where do I start to like enact my will on this, on this life, you know, and create this realization for me, it was that aligning my desires with the creator's desires, mm -hmm. you know? And when I started mm -hmm. doing that, it allowed these two to just be like, Oh, okay. Like you want us both to have what we want. And I'm like, yeah. And then it's like, boom. Oh, you know, and it, and it kind of keeps you there rather than kind of like having to like, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think that's where like, you know, that confusion or that uncertainty is because I don't know if maybe uh, some of our listeners can maybe resonate with this is that what if you don't have that like embedded in you from, from yeah. birth? Like how do you get that courage and, and how do you overcome that dilemma? Like what would you say is, something that's encouraging or maybe like some advice that I don't know if it has to do with something with yoga or what it would be to get people into a practice when they have this dilemma like present but you well, don't I, have that like initial like no you must choose yourself and it's not selfish well I, I wonder you know I think there's something really really interesting like I was like when you're speaking it makes me think is this like, is this the difference between men and women? Because I definitely think men are generally, not always, but generally more connected to that connection of like, I'm taking up space, you know, and not seeing that as selfish and really having that innate, like out, outward, external, like I'm gonna, you know what I mean? That oh, I think ownership. we got something here. And then yeah. you know I mean, we internalize, we've got the, all of this self doubt going on. Like, you know what I mean? This kind of like imposture, situ you know, never feeling good enough, never feeling sure of ourselves enough. Ne even though, like you say, you're like very strong intuitive sense, but never really trusting uh -huh. it. And I, and I really, when I heard, like when you were talking there, like that sense of like, no, I've known it from like child, man. I knew who I was and I'd be like, I'm pursuing it and I'm going for it. And I'm like thinking, dad, like, I don't, I don't think I've ever felt like that. But like, you know, that's taken time. That's taken effort and that's taken work. Definitely I'm more comfortable huh. in myself. But I do wonder if that is like the dynamic here playing out right now in real time. Hmm. Damn. Damn. Maybe that is the difference between the masculine and feminine and like noticing that difference mm. and I mean just just from things that I've learned about you know people who have researched and studied you know masculine and feminine how it expresses and ex masculine is more external way and feminine is more internal way like yeah I never I never really seen that from from that side is I think for me that has always been like my intuition and like maybe that connection to that feminine aspect inside of me Mm -hmm. um you have that practice of my intuition you know being like no like, you know and then also witnessing my masculine on the outside like trying to fit in and trying to do this and like trying to be cool and like 
grow in this ego. It was like almost this feminine aspect of like protecting this like precious intuition this whole time. I like the masculine energy was just out doing rambunctious shit. And then by the time she looked up, she was like, what the, what the hell have you been doing? You done? <laughs> and then I'm over there like, you know, with a styrofoam cup and like, you know, my fucking stupid ass hat. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> and she's like, oh, God damn it. damn it. Get over here. Come here. You know? And I'm like, oh, all right, I'm gonna get my shit together. You know? <laughs> And I and I too. I wonder if the same is true opposite. Like, there's an internal cultivation that happens. Like, maybe it works more internally for women, and then eventually that is expressed outward. And maybe it's the other way with men. Like you said, outward expression. But was it was it like that for you when you when you found yoga? Because I know that you said that it was like when you because it was it was so interesting. Like the the contrast that I'm seeing with our story, but the like like the the commonality as well. Because you said like during the happiest time of your life was like when you let go and like you had, you had gained all the weight. And like, for me, that reigning in, like, you know, when that feminine energy looked up and was like, what the fuck, Max? And it was like this intuition. Like I remember having a conversation, I was looking in the mirror and this is at a time where like I began my practice and, and the journey like initially started, but you know, I was, I was heavy set. I was, you know, drinking a lot and going to parties and eating fast food. And like, you know, I wouldn't say my body was shit, but, wasn't all that together, you know? And, like, you couldn't tell me I wasn't the sexiest sad dude a lot, but you couldn't tell me that. You know, just all the confidence in the world. But I remember looking in the mirror and this voice was just telling me, like, you are not living your life like this anymore. Like, stop. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you need to do this. You don't know what the hell you're doing, but you need to do this. You need to do this. And it was, like, very clear, like a plan. But it was so, like, loving and kind and was, like, also very adamant and, like, stern, you mm -hmm. know? And that was like the shift for me. So it was interesting, like hearing you saying, like you went to this complete opposite side and like let go of your body and let go of those conditions of like being confined. And I was like in this opposite realm, but also had the same experience, like through yeah. the body, yeah. you know, and it was like the body was the, the channel and the, the trans or not the transmitter, the receiver of that message, you know, and yeah. Yeah, I would say that this is the important part of if there's anything that you want to take from this podcast and well, this first episode is the balancing of that feminine and masculine is like creating a physical vessel for them to actually realize that self, you know, you have to create the vessel like when, even when you do a business, you have to create that vessel for it to be filled with whatever you want to fill it with, you know, so I would say like that is a that is a piece of my advice as well is like, yes, practice but also understand like what body needs practicing, yes. you know? And can um, I jump in there as well quickly? Yeah, just yeah. Because, you know, again, sorry, the, the yogi in the corner here, like, no, but seriously, like, because, you know, my practice, we build strength and flexibility, you know? And often uh -huh. we are, we're working with the body and we're working with one or the other. So you often see like these guys, they go to the gym, like, whoa, like heavy, like lifted weights, like really bulking up, but not working on that flexibility. And actually they, they both work simultaneously. And I think that's really, really important as well. And that the same is true women. Like I said, this kind of like, oh no, I don't want to lift weights because I don't want to, you know what I mean? I don't want to like look bulky. Or I don't want to look like mm -hmm. a man or whatever whatever and I think there is just something about cultivating the part of yourself where there is weakness um to find that mm. part, you know um mm. yeah so you know if you're mm -hmm. you, there's a bit of resistance towards that maybe that's exactly what you need to find tune and find that balance um, right. you know otherwise yeah. you're just going to outsource that to other people um and if you want to you know sort of looking forward to one of our, our, our like our, one of our episodes in terms of just becoming you know rounded whole yeah um, i i 100% agree with that <laughs> that is the mic drop right there <laughs> find out where that body of weakness and resistance is mm -hmm. and build a practice around that 100% and i think that is where you'll find that foundation mm -hmm. and start to actually realize you know, and you have the, the capability or the opportunity to realize. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, what 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 needs to be even more said <laughs> than that, you know? And yeah, I think with that, this is this has been 
the motherfucking quadrant and we're gonna we're gonna definitely delve into a little bit more like once we start to understand those practices and you know we build those and if there's any questions that you know you guys ever want to ask shaka or me about how we build a practice how to build an effective practice um what body needs that practice like you can always reach out to us um and like check into the link visit our website things like that um and we'll because, also like, post the, the uh, all the questions that we posted to all the questions that we posed today. We'll we'll have them also in the in the description. Ah, well. uh, yes. And if yeah, if you want to go back and and if some of these questions like stir some things up, you can always go back there and reflect on them. Um, because these are also important questions to not only just have us express or you know um, have a guidance towards, but it's also like things to to bring into your own practice. You know, to to ask these certain things so that you can listen to that feminine and that masculine aspect of yourself and start to cultivate, you know, and just listen to see what comes to you naturally because this is really what it's about. And this is what this, this talk and this share is about, is about this path, you know, like you said, with that white rabbit, it's, it's following, but building the path as well, you know, laying each brick as it, as it consistently presents itself in front of you and, and learning that way. You know, um, for me personally, I want to shift this whole narrative of like doing the work and why not encourage more like taking the walk, you know, because that's really what it is, you know, like turn that work into a walk yeah. and our bodies need to be strong. Like our men, our feminine and our masculine body needs to be strong and they need to walk in union. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I hope you guys feel supported by this and. Um, and it really stimulates you to start asking questions, not only to yourself, but take these questions to your family, to your friends, to everybody, because they're also expressions of you as well. And they're expressions of this feminine, this masculine outside. And I, I truly am a believer in the people that we see and we experience in our lives are those shadows and those mirrors that are within our life. So um, that's going to be something that we'll talk about on the next episode is learning how to dance with those. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. If you have any questions, you can reach out to Shaka. You can reach out to myself. And I hope you took something out of this. And if you didn't, write us some questions and put some me into it. <laughs> <laughs> um, any last words, Shaka? No, I just we did well. I feel like we did that under an under an hour and a half, and that's like that's pretty good for me and you. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes yes we're not taking too six, much six. time we're not we're not having you we don't want you to spend time here we want you to share time share us, time you know yes you want to share some time so <laughs> um yeah and this is going to be a series of just delving a little bit deeper and deeper and just pulling these layers back a little bit more question by question and experience by experience because we've had i would say some pretty dope lives and I would like to share that and also get you guys perspective as well on how to balance these masculine and feminine energies and not only bring them just from that esoteric Aquarius world, but bringing that down into the partnership and the realization into our real life. So um, with that being said, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, lovely Shaka, for your thank energy. You. Thank you, Max. And thank you, Max, everyone, for this day. Day. <laughs> Absolutely. Ciao for now. If you like this episode and would like to explore more perspectives like this with me as we get a bit more intimate and intricate look into our internal vibrations, be sure to tune in to next week's episode and subscribe for more. Until then, keep frequently speaking what you frequently see.